Today's training is how to start a new loan in Calyx Point. So there's a couple ways you can do that. So you can click this little white paper with the folded corner. You can click this button here. Um, you can go to file, new, loan, borrower. And it, you see it brings you back to the same screen that like the other previous buttons did as well. So let's just do this route by clicking this paper. Um, you wanna click borrower. And then if you have templates created, they will be listed here. Um, right now we'll just do a new blank file just to keep it simple. So first page is pretty much just gonna be obviously your client's information, first name, middle initial, last name. You'll get the social security card or they could get, tell it to you verbally, however which way you prefer to take your client's application. Um, you'll put a cell phone number. I usually will put the same number for the cell phone and for the home phone. You'll put an email. And then you would do the same if there was a co-borrower. Um, you'll put where they live currently. Sorry for my typos. California. You'll ask them how many years they've been living there. Um, usually for a loan and for credit purposes, they want a two year history. If they're doing a purchase transaction, you probably at this point don't know what property they're gonna be purchasing. So I usually will put TBD. And then let's just say they're gonna be purchasing a single family residence, which is a house. So we call that detached on the application. And most clients are wanting a term of 30 years. And so just to do a general interest rate, let's just start it at 3%. Let's just do a home price, down payment 5%, and then it'll calculate the loan amount on its own. Um, I'll check this unlocked box to do, you know, monthly um, insurance for taxes in the state of California. Our tax rate is 1.25. So if you guys had a template, your template would actually kind of save that number. Um, for MI, we'll just uh, put 0.59. And then if you had a condo, you would want to put your HOA information here. So the next screen we'll go to will be loan application page one. A lot of stuff is going to carry over, but there's going to be some things you will need to fill in still. For example, a number of units. So we'll put one year built. Um, you can put just a general year until you know what property they're actually actually purchasing and then you can update it later. Usually if it's like a single guy, you would click single man or maybe you just don't know yet. Let's say it's husband wife, then you could just put TBD. So sources of funds. Generally, we're looking at checking, checking and saving. So I'll just put that there. Um, you'll want to know if they're married, unmarried, or separated. So we'll just say this guy's unmarried. Let's just say he has two kids, and one's 10 and one's eight years old. And they rent this. So, and then you could just click this button, same as present, and it'll carry over. And like I said earlier, if you have a co borrower their information would transfer over here, and you would just, you know, kind of fill in the things that were not carrying over. So now the next page we're going to go to is page two. So here you will put where they work at. So let's just make up a name. John Smith Company, address John Smith Lane. Zip code. You'll put their position. You'll put a business phone number. A lot of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. 
um, you will have to ask them certain questions, for example, how, how long they've worked there. And then if they only have worked there for, let's just say five months, I'll put a 5M, 5M, and then you're gonna wanna click new right here and you're gonna wanna input previous employment. So previous employment. And then the address, city, state, zip code. You'll put basically their hire date, their end date, their income, that they work there, job title, and the phone number as well. So whenever um, you're taking the app, just make sure if they haven't worked at their current job that you receive um, all the jobs that they worked for in the last two years. Save and close, and it'll show up here. And you'll need to get BOEs as well for the last two years. So base income, let's say that they currently make an hourly of like $25. So it's gonna calculate for you as you can see here. If they make a yearly salary, you can put, you know, whatever it is, their annual salary, it'll calculate the monthly. If they have bi-weekly, whatever it is, pretty much it'll calculate it for you. So that's really nice. So let's just say 25 per hour. Let's just say the next thing you're gonna do is present income. I'm sorry, present housing payment. So let's just say they're making payments at $1,500 a month, this is where you would input that. If you have any extra special circumstance income, for example, like alimony, child support, this is where those, um, those figures would go. And to make sure that the system picks it up, the only extra step you need to worry about is making sure in this field, you either put a B or a C, so it counts. So let's just put B. And there you go, you'll see right there that it came up. Okay, the next page is on application page three. This is the page where you will input their um, information from their bank statements. You will put credit in this screen. And if they own any properties, you will list them here. So let's just say they bank with Chase. You have a checking account with Chase and their account number, and let's just say there's around $10,000 there. And you'll click save and close. Let's say they have a savings account now with Chase. You'll input bank name, account numbers. Let's just say they have another 10,000 there. And then we will click save and close. So the next thing is credit. Um, I will link a video down below on how to pull a credit report in a separate video. So just after you're done watching that one, just go ahead and reference that and then come back to where you left off. In this area, we'll put, you know, real estate owned. In this situation, maybe they probably don't own any real estate yet because maybe this is their first time purchasing, but just for training purposes, we will just put something here so you can see Chola Vista California if they're selling or using this property as a rental or if it's already been sold this could be considered a departing residence and they're taking the assets from that to buy a new property this is where you would mark one of these options by putting S P, S, or R. And it's pretty, it gives you a description here as well that you could always click on if you ever kind of forget. Um, right here, you'll put single family. You'll put the market value. We said 550. Say they own 500 on it. And then if you were renting this property out, you would input um, all this information here. So again, this is specifically for people that currently own properties and then if you added it, it would pop up here. And when you pull the credit, there's this thing called match to liability where you would match the two together. But we'll get back to that later. So this is pretty much everything you'll need for a loan application page three. And then we'll go to page four, the very, almost the last page. So this is called the declarations page. And you pretty much wanna ask your clients 
questions A through M. So, and then you'll answer them. In most cases, everything is pretty much no until you get to, are you a US citizen? Yes. Are you a permanent resident? No. Do you tend to occupy this as your primary? In most cases, clients do. And if they're a first time home buyer, they probably didn't own anything in the last three years. So you will click no. And here you will ask them pretty much their um, ethnicity, race, gender. So let's just click for training reasons. And obviously if they don't want to furnish this information, you would click this button. You as a loan officer, your information would go here. And your phone number, email, interview date, etc. cetera. So um, that's pretty much how to fill in an application. Um, I always like to go to this loan application addendum page and just make sure I'm compliant and I click no, no, no on these three questions. And I'll just say I did this face to face, just so everything's there. So that pretty much wraps up how to fill out an application through Calyx Point. Please keep in mind that the more information you have, the easier the loan will go along the way and you'll have a more streamlined process.